for the last few months, I've been staying here while I look for a new place, but today is actually my last day here, so let's go inside and I'll show you what it's like. What is up guys and welcome back to the Endless Voyage. Today I am taking you into my apartment that I've been living in for the past few months. Actually, this place is a little sentimental to me because when I first moved to Bangkok, this was the very first apartment that I got. I originally found it on Airbnb. After staying here for about a month or so, I got very friendly with the landlord and so after that I could just reach out to him directly and make a deal. First stop is going to be the pool and gym. And while we're in the elevator, I want to point this out. This thing is so annoying. More and more buildings have been doing it lately. They are installing these TVs to play ads while you're in the elevator. You get in the elevator for 20 seconds of peace and quiet and that stupid TV turns on and starts playing you an ad in Thai about some product that you care nothing about. I really, really hope it doesn't become a bigger trend, but I've already seen a few buildings adopting those in elevator advertisement screens. Anyway, we are now out here on the seventh floor. This is where the pool and the fitness facility is. And as you can see, there's a infinity pool here. Now, to be honest, it's not the most amazing pool in Bangkok. I mean, my last apartment had a pool on, I think like the 30th floor. Just an amazing design for a pool and a rooftop area. This one is still very good, obviously. I mean, I'm grateful to have these facilities at all. At the same time, I really never use this, so it really doesn't matter that much to me. One thing I do like, however, are the rooftop green areas that are on so many of the newer apartment buildings here in Bangkok. It's just a cool place to come and hang out. Maybe you're having a friend over and want to sit and have a drink. Maybe you just want to go outside and make a phone call. In any case, it's a really nice area to come out and relax and you don't even have to leave your building. Oh, and by the way, I know I'm gonna get comments about my hat because I never wear hats in videos. I'm just lazy today. I didn't do anything with my hair and I'm gonna go get my hair cut soon. So I just figured I'd throw a hat on. If you love it, put it in the comments. If you hate it, put it in the comments. I probably won't listen to you and wear my hat anyway in more videos, but anyway, let's go on to the next thing. Although I really like this building, this gym is probably the biggest disappointment. It's actually a really nice room and it's got lots of great windows, lots of great natural light looking out over the city. This is what I sometimes lovingly refer to as an Asian style gym. I mean, I find that the gyms in Asia are heavily focused on cardio equipment and not so much on weight training. In fact, if you look here, they, they don't have many dumbbells at all and they only go up to and they only go up to 20 kilograms, which is like around 40 or 45 pounds. Anyone that's a serious gym goer knows that's probably not gonna work if you're really into weight training and fitness. So instead of going here, I would go to a place around the corner that I really like. It's about two minutes away and it's a full gym that has everything you could ever want. So it's kind of a shame I can't use this gym, but at least there's something nearby. All right guys, we are up on the 10th floor. That is the uh, electronic lock you hear behind me. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, I am moving out of this apartment today, but I really like it and I wanted to show you it. It's a bit messy because I'm packing everything, but I hope this will at least give you an idea of what it's like. Use your imagination. Coming in, we've got the kitchen on the right side, and quite honestly, this is probably my least favorite part about this apartment. You can see there's a microwave and there's a small two burner stove, but there's not much counter space, there's no oven. It's really not a kitchen for someone that likes to cook, and I've cooked in here a bunch of times, and to be honest, it's just kind of a pain and it makes me not want to cook. This unit is about 35 square meters, which is not big. I put what it is in square feet below, but to be honest, I do think that that size room is oh, definitely okay to live in. Um, the only thing I would say about that is just make sure if you're looking for a place, it has enough storage. This unit, for example, has a closet right when you come in, which has the washing machine and just some shelves and stuff. It's pretty tall. And it also has another closet where you can put shoes or whatever else. Um, but some of these apartments have literally no closets. I mean, the last apartment I was in, had nothing, it had no closet, it had nothing. The landlord had put in like a wardrobe, but other than that, it had no built-in closet space. This one also has some great cabinets for like storing food and dishes and everything. So storage here hasn't really been a problem, but it definitely can be an issue in some of these smaller apartments. So watch out for that. 
And don't mind all this stuff, it's all photography stuff. I was working on a project recently and just haven't packed it up yet. Coming over to the living area, it's not big, but it's nice. The landlord did a really nice job furnishing this place. One thing that I'm always shocked about is when there's a really nice property, but and it's maybe a really expensive property, but the landlord puts the worst furniture in there, like the worst of the worst. Like they find it outside and just throw it in the apartment and it totally ruins it. This guy did a really nice job. I think he's actually an interior designer, which explains some of this stuff. Maybe some people don't care as much about that kind of thing, but to each his own, I like it, which is why I've stayed here for a while. Coming into the bedroom now, one of the best things about this bedroom is that it's a pretty decent size and also it gets a lot of nice window light. Besides that, it's got a giant closet, which is super helpful because like I said, there's not always a lot of storage in these small apartments. And then you've got the bathroom on this side, which is not huge, but it's definitely adequate. You've got the rainfall shower and the, uh, the handheld shower there, and you've got a pretty big vanity. One thing I've noticed is that a lot of these Bangkok condos, the bathrooms don't have very good lighting at all. They don't have any lighting on the mirror or they're very dark. I don't really get it because back in the US, you would never design a bathroom with bad lighting, but I've seen it several times here and it can be really annoying when you're trying to get ready in there every day. So just something to notice if you're looking at apartments. So what does a place like this cost? Well. There's no set rate for an apartment. It really depends on a lot of factors. And one thing I didn't mention about this place yet is that it is right on Sukhumvit Road, right next to the Tongla BTS station. And that really puts it at a premium because you literally walk 10 steps and you're at the BTS station. It saves you so much time, especially during rainy season, which is right now, uh, filming this in August. It is clutch because you can easily just leave your place and get on the train and not have to worry about finding a tax taxi or walking in the rain or dealing with any of that stuff. A place like this normally rents for around 30 to 35,000 baht, but a of course, that depends on the circumstances, the supply, the demand. During the COVID time, everything was a lot cheaper. I actually got this place at a bit of a discount um, this time around. I was, I'm paying right now 25,000 baht plus electricity and water, which is like electricity can be anywhere from one to 2,000 baht a month, depending on how much you use. This apartment has two air conditioners. And so that's something I have to be careful of because it's really easy to run up the electricity bill if you're not careful. Some apartments, they only have one air conditioning unit, so it's a little easier. Um, but as long as you're mindful, it's really not a problem. Water cost is like 100 baht a month, maybe. It's, it's really negligible. And internet, I'm not paying internet, it's included in this, but internet would be like three to 500 baht a month. Not too much, but if you can get your utilities, even if it's just your internet rolled into the rent, it makes things so much easier. It's just one less thing to deal with. So talk to your landlord about that and see if you can just package something together so you don't have to deal with it. Oh yeah, before you go, I wanna show you what might be my favorite part about this apartment. Step right this way. So this place has a great balcony. Most apartments in Bangkok have a balcony. It's sort of a necessity because you need to dry your clothes outside. Um, the difference is that many of them are very, very small and not really usable in any real way besides just drying your clothes. This one is actually pretty big um, and he, the landlord put like a chair out here so you can chill, have a drink. Um, if I was staying here longer, I might even put like a little table so I could eat out here. It's really great to come out here in the morning or at night and just kind of enjoy the outdoor space. And this unit faces west, so at night there's just the most amazing sunsets over here behind the skyline. It's really one of the reasons that I fell in love with this place when I first moved here. So that is it guys, that is my current Bangkok apartment, I'm moving out tomorrow. I'm gonna find a new place, possibly a new neighborhood. This one is right in the Tung Law neighborhood, right next to the BTS station. It's really a great location for a lot of things in Bangkok. Highly suggest it, although it is a bit expensive in this area. If you wanna see more videos with apartment tours, what life in Bangkok is like, and what the cost of living is here, hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos as I find a new apartment. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.